So, so far, we have dealt with, ladies, finding areas of parallelograms and triangles. And we have found areas of trapezoids, kites, and rhombi. Today we're talking about regular polygons. Before we get into that, though, there's a little bit of vocabulary that I need to make sure that we're clear on. Alyssa, you all right over there? Okay. So, in a regular polygon, the radius of that polygon goes from the center of the polygon to a vertex. Be very, very careful not to confuse the radius of a polygon with its apothem, also called apothem, pronunciation makes no difference to me. On your reference sheet, you'll see it as a lowercase a, okay? But what's important to you about the apothem is that it goes from the center and is perpendicular to a side of the regular polygon. Okay, so be very, very careful. Don't confuse a radius with the apothem. Their lengths are never the same. So in problem one, before we get into finding the area of these polygons, let's kind of ready ourselves into it by talking about the angle measures inside this polygon. Notice that radii have been drawn. Notice that an apothem has been drawn. How do you think we would find the measure of angle one in this regular hexagon? How do you think we would find the measure of angle one in this regular hexagon? Well, eyes up. Notice how many of the angles in this figure are just like angle one. How many? There's six of them. So I have six congruent angles going around a point. How many degrees are there going around a point? 360. So if I have 360 degrees going around a point and I've got six angles going around that point and I know all of those angles are congruent, now how do I find angle one? Of course, measure of angle one will be 360 divided by six, which is 60. And I'm going to kind of skip around with the order. How would I find angle three? Look at angle three. It's half of it, absolutely. So measure of angle three, is half of 60, which is 30. Notice that I've indicated that that apothem is forming a 90 degree angle. So finding angle two should be fairly easy. What's the measure of angle two? It's also 60. Okay, but be mindful. I love it, I heard it. Oh, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Yes, absolutely. Um, however, I do want you to be mindful of don't automatically think that the angle formed by the radii will always equal this angle formed by a radius and a side. They don't. The hexagon is just fantastically wonderful in that sense. Okay, but it doesn't happen in, in any other thing. Okay, so in problem two, I'm being asked to find the area of this octagon. And oh, Mrs. Klaus, you did not give me a formula for the area of an octagon. So think about what we have at our disposal. Think about the formulas that we've dealt with so far. Think about in the previous problem how you saw an octagon broken down. Break it down into triangles. So let's consider this triangle here. The area of a triangle we know to be one half base times height. What would be the area of that particular triangle? Or what would be the base of that particular triangle? It's the 12, which is the side of the polygon. What is the height of that triangle? the 14.5 that is given to you as the apothem of the octagon. And 
And so the area of the triangle is 87 square centimeters. So that's the area of that triangle. I'm trying to find the area of the octagon. What's the last piece of the puzzle? Multiplying that area times 8. So I know that the area of the octagon is 8 times that 87, giving me 696. And let's take that process that we just did in order to come up with a formula that we can use for any regular polygon. What did we do in this process? We found the area of the triangle. Now the area of the triangle is always one half base times height. In this octagon, the base of the triangle was the what of the octagon? It was one of its sides, so I'm going to use an S to label that. And then the height of that triangle was the what of the octagon? The apothem, apothem, however you want to call it. And then that gave us the area of one of the triangles. And then what did we do in the end? Multiplied it by eight in this instance by the number of sides. Absolutely. So I want to clean this formula up just a tiny, tiny bit. If I multiply these two values together, the S and the N, the S, remember, is the length of each side, the N is the number of sides. If I multiply those two values together, what am I finding of the polygon? If I, yes. And there's the formula that you will see on your reference sheet. One half the perimeter of the polygon times the apophthe. Moving on to our last kind of problem in today's lesson. We're finding the area of a regular hexagon. And remember, our formula is still one half perimeter times the apothem. What is different about this problem? I don't have the apothem. Okay? But I did tell you previously that there's something fantastically wonderful about a hexagon. Some of you noticed it. Let's go back and take a look. Oh, yes. When I have a hexagon, it's chock full of those wonderful 30, 60, 90 triangles that you all love so much. So we use that to our advantage and we find its apothem. Does that work in every regular polygon? No. No. Okay. <laughs> all right, so. What I would hope that you'd realize is in this regular polygon, in this regular hexagon, I have these 30, 60, 90 triangles inside, gentlemen and ladies. So I know that each side is 5. So what's this segment right here? 2.5, 2.5. .5, 2 .5. And what, therefore, will be the length of the apothem? No, the apothem, remember, is the long leg of this 30, 60, 90, where the 2.5 is my short leg. Ooh, ooh, I heard. 2.5 times 3. Yes, my apothem is 2.5 radical 3. And now I have all of the pieces of my puzzle I can plug into the formula. So the area is 1 half times the perimeter of this hexagon is 30, and then times this 2.5 radical 3 thing, which, oh, look at how nice they are. They're letting me round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so you're just typing this into your calculator. Is 
feel like my calculator is giving me numbers that are way too big. Yeah, my calculator. Um, there we go. Sixty-five. Square piece.